Congratulations. I don't even know where you begin to start to write a script about the, the latter part of Judy Garland, the chapter of her life. Um, can you share how you became accustomed to the story? Well, it began with Peter Quilter's play, uh, The End of the Rainbow, um, which sort of chose this particular chapter of Judy's life. Um, I think because it, it sort of captured her at her most vulnerable. Um, and uh, But, you know, despite that vulnerability, despite all the challenges that she faces, uh, she still manages, you know, uh, on the nights where it comes together, to blow audiences away. And uh, so uh, you know, that was the beginning of it, really. And when the producer, David Livingston, um, asked me to start looking at it, um, the, the thing that really um, moved me the most was probably looking at some of the original interviews uh, that Judy did in the mid-60s. Um, and looking at those interviews, most of which are still on YouTube, uh, conveniently, um, you, you see this, this woman who is incredibly polished at giving a very entertaining anecdote from one of the you know, many decades that she was out there working. But at the same time, you see moments of real vulnerability uh, when she's questioned about her children um, in particular. Um, and I just thought, you know, she looked fascinating. She, uh, you know, th there was a thread of anger there, but also incredible wit and humanity. And I just thought, this looks like a, an incredibly complex woman. And, uh, and I wanted to get to know her better. So, so that started things. And interestingly enough, what, what I picked up from it as well is that for, for the, the, the delicate situation that she has found herself in, she still has this wit, this spirit. Um, you know, she's a fighter, isn't she? Absolutely. And, you know, uh, you know one of the, the things that I found emotionally uh, affecting was uh, the more I learned about her, the fact that she'd been working since the age of two. Um, and, you know, with a stage mother who when they were out on the road uh, doing vaudeville, you would, would sort of tell her, you know, if you misbehave, I'll just leave you here. And they'd be in some city in the middle of the country where she had no idea where she was. And the more I learned, and this is even before we get to her MGM days, about how much she had to carry with her, um, you know, the more impressive it felt that, uh, that she managed to endure and survive and come back and fight and actually forge that beautiful connection with her fans um, that was so resonant. Um, so, you know, that was, uh, you know, that, that was very moving. Interestingly enough, but you say about forging the connection with the fans, there's a beautiful moment um, in the film that really does, one of many tear-jerking moments, but really, really powerful with Andy Nyman. Was that a scene that was dramatised or was that something that actually happened? I mean, the, the, the original play has a, uh, a, a gay character who's an accompanist um, to Judy during her London dates. And we, we wanted to move away from the balance that the play offers of this fictional character and Judy and cleave something a little closer to the events. But at the same time, it felt important to us that um, her relationship with that community, um, which was you know, highly reciprocal, you know, I think uh, you know, those moments where they connected uh, live, uh, you know, they're, they're astonishing, really. And we, we wanted to acknowledge that. Um, and I, you know, I think it, that relationship um, ends up capturing something about, uh, about Garland and her relationship uh, to, to love. You know, she, she, was, she was always sort of seeking love that she could rely on. And the, the great challenge was that she was parted from family, she was uh, she was parted from husband after husband um, and and actually her relationship with her audience the ones who came out for her night after night even on the nights where other people were throwing bread rolls was in a sense one of the most enduring and uh, we wanted to pay some tribute to that and explore that as well. What was interesting as well, I won't keep you forever but there's so many things that we could talk about with this was um, she was very much an object, you know, she was on this kind of tyrannical kind of regime, really. Um, you, you delicately balance um, what happens in the past, but it, oh, it doesn't overtake it, but it's enough to give the audience some uh, um, acknowledgement of what she's actually been through and why we see the Judy that we see that day. Yeah, I think the, the use of flashbacks, you know, developed um, 
as, as I worked with Rupert, the director in particular, um, and I think we, we always thought they were going to be a challenge because with Judy, there are some people who know almost every week of her life uh, so intimately. Uh, but there will be other, other people coming to this story with very little awareness, really, of, um, of who she was and, and how those kind of, uh, the challenges of her early life uh, affected things. I think um, one of the things that we thought was interesting was by, by taking you know, these weeks at the end of her life and pairing them with these uh, these formative weeks as they go into production on on the you know on Wizard of Oz, uh, really you're offered sort of two ends of the rainbow, uh, you know the the young the young woman who is so full of life and promise she's so spirited, uh, you know there's that kick of rebellion to her um, uh, despite everything that is being thrown at her, and and at the other end in the last year of her life, uh, you have echoes of that and you also have. Uh, a sense of you know how the challenge of living through those months uh, is informed by that period. So for some people, they they they'll go well. I know all of this, um, but for others, you know, I, I think it will be essential to understanding why that time was so challenging and you know what made a hero of her when she managed to get up time and again and and do it uh, and uh, to make that connection.